So this is great because we were talking um, earlier about uh, sex toys and adult toys, and okay. uh, you know that you have created a line. Oh. So um, right, right, right. So okay. <laughs> no. just made a couple new customers. Yeah. Now, I hope so. <laughs> he's, he's, he's not a huge fan. Not really. However, is well versed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's an educated man. <laughs> I'm well versed too. You got a fan because your line of toys aren't out here yet. You can talk to us about it. Mike, oh yeah, I definitely want to hear about it. Oh, yeah, so um, what happened was when I posed nude for Paper Magazine after Love & Hip Hop, um, I was approached by Flesh Jack, and they were like, yo, we have to market this. We have to, you know, take it by... I'm trying to... <laughs> 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 Grab the, the balls by its side. Uh, yeah, yeah, or like, something okay. like that. You see Auntie Steph. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. So they wanted me to uh, do a molding of, you know, my body parts, and I was all for it because, you know, I had already put myself out there, so it was like, you know what, I might as well take advantage of this, this moment. And um, it's been doing really, really, really well, especially during the quarantine. Well, and now, yeah. and now if they need any more um, mm -hmm. uh, development staff. Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I'm I mean, curious about the molding part. Okay. So did you have to do a self-molding? Did someone do a molding for you? So did you have a fluffer? Yeah. You go <laughs> we want to go back to your body. <laughs> the they want to go back to your body. <laughs> <laughs> go oh, first. so what, you, I don't know if you guys, you know how you get an MRI or the thing that like you go, you lay down like this and you go inside. Yeah. So they have something very similar to that. And so you go in there with um, you and your 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 friend, and they literally like scan your body, and it gets all the way down Eric? to like the most. Yeah, so it's literally like no a more replica. pencils and socks. Eric. No. So, then, so then what happens? It's so they just scan you, and then they uh, the technology or the the scan is sent to the machine, and the machine. Kind Almost, of like it. it's yeah. Yeah. Almost like 3D. It's a 3D scanner. Almost like 3D printer. 3D printer, yeah. And it prints it, and it's literally like the exact Every replica of you. Every fold and the whole Everything. Wow. Even, even up until, like, vibrate? the inside of... Vibrate? Oh, no, it's not a vibrator. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but you can insert something in it in the back of it, and it turns into a vibrator. Okay. Yeah. So is it on the market? Yes, it's on fleshjack.com uh, forward slash Milan, and actually it's in um, literally about 80% of all... Adult adult toy uh, stores in the country. Right, yeah, it's it. really it's literally the number one uh, best selling toy on the market right now. And COVID, wow. it went up. And COVID, it went up two hundred and twenty percent. Wow. How many toys? Oh. I've sold over a million <laughs> toys specifically. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah. went from selling music to word. selling dildos, okay? <laughs> hey. Million is her magic word. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it's basically, you, got, you got the uh, dildo and the... Uh, the flesh jack. And the flesh jack. And the flesh jack is the, the, the ass. Okay. Yeah. yeah, both. And then the, the dildo is the dildo. So how did you come so open with your sexuality? Um, you know what? It was... It was... I, I felt like when I was growing up, I had always tried to like hide. I'm from the hood. I'm from Chicago. So Chicago too. Hey. <laughs> yeah. So Here, you know, Eric. being from Chicago and growing up from like in the hood, um, I had a hard time like trying to accept myself walking through the hood and just trying to like blend in with everybody. Right. And then I had a little brother who ended up getting shot and passed away. Oh, wow. And before um, he passed away. I told him, you know, he asked me why I don't play the games like with him, football and all the other crazy stuff. And I was like, I'm gay. And he was like, so, and like, Aww. what does that mean? Like, you're still supposed to play with me. I'm your little brother. And then um, literally two weeks after that, he passed away. And after that, I was like, I don't give a shit what nobody says. Come on, I'm just going to be you going to live your life. And yeah. It's a wonderful feeling. So I've just been open. For just, how long? Um, since I was about 17, 18 years old. From exploratory years. Yeah. What would you tell your young self? Um, I would tell my young self to not focus so much on uh, what the community says or what people around you think um, of your sexuality or who you are because the power is within you. You know what I mean? And you can do whatever it is that you set your mind to, so. I, I feel the exact same way. Really? Yeah, you know. I, I told you when I was 12 years old. That's so powerful. I was very clear that 
The world may not embrace me for any number of reasons, maybe because I was a black person, maybe because I was a gay person. And I, I remember looking and telling myself, all you got to do is embrace you. What gave you that foundation? I, I believe my grandmother. It's really interesting. She used to sing to me. And, you know, now there's all kinds of studies that suggest that singing to children when they're little is beneficial. So she sang to me daily, and she always told me I could be anything I want to be. God, and so, so I believe that. And I live that way, as if I can be anything I want to be. And guess what? I can. What and is, we all can. What area are you from? Like, what I'm city? from Detroit. Oh, you're from the Midwest, too? Okay. Mm -hmm. Apple. That's really the hood. It's what we're taught, you know? Right. And when you love yourself, no one can come up against All that. All right, now. Including being verse. A absolutely. <laughs> I <laughs> love it. I'm curious, too, because I know, you know, just being gay and in Chicago, you know, and, and being in the hood, it's just, it's difficult um, universally for us as, as black men. And mm -hmm. um, then choosing to be openly gay on television and sort of mm. becoming kind of this representation of that world, what was that like to, to, to sort of realize that you are now a pioneer in mm -hmm. some ways on a very popular, very anti-gay yeah. series? Mm. Um, it was, mm. you know, so for me, my experience was a little different than a lot of other people um, because I was not on like, um, I think Karamo Brown was on like Real World where it was more, um, even though you had the demographic was a lot of African-American people watched it, but it was majority watched by um, Caucasian people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Love and Hip Hop is very, the demographic is 25 to 45 year old black women. Um, Cause I'm not the most feminine guy, but I'm not the True. most masculine guy either. Mm -hmm. um, but you're, you're a but, You know, I'm like in between. Uh -huh. But uh, on television for a long a time, <laughs> for a long time, you know, we get these um, the more effeminate people who mm -hmm. are more ex exploit explored on television, you know, with like the RuPaul's and right. just different characters. Um, so I was kind of like, I didn't know what to do. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? I was I just had to live in my truth. So it, um, oh, say that again. Live in my truth. Oh. And the problem with the problem with that was um, you have these black women in, who are so engulfed in the church, Ooh. and you know I was getting a lot of Bible thumpers. I was getting a lot of you going to hell. I was getting a lot of you trying to change this man. To in the black this. community, and God it, is me. It just uh, yeah. God me. It's like Baby, you know God gonna get you for everything. Yeah, <laughs> I was nervous like, but um, Lord. At the end of it, at the end of it, even though I didn't want to come back another season, I was blessed because I got like literally thousands and thousands of messages of people like you saved my life, you know, kids emailing me, um, being able to go on the Wendy Williams show, being on the cover of like all these different uh, New York Times, New York Post, LA Times. I was like, oh, I did something good. From living your From truth. From loving hip hop though. But yeah, my experience was, at first it was a little uh, scary, but it was it was still good. Yeah. Who was your support yeah. system during that time? Because that's that means a lot. Am I, I right? Yeah, my support system was my family. My mom, well, my dad at first. My mom didn't know okay. until that show. Oh, <laughs> yeah. um, but my dad, and it was it was pretty it was pretty good. Everybody was, don't have a family support hire. Yeah. Well, I like the way that you put it uh, uh, the other day when you said that my family didn't know what to do with me because for the longest time I, I held it you. against them mm -hmm. that they were abusive emotionally psychologically when that's closer to the truth that they just didn't know no when we're kids we have the churches against us mm -hmm. we go to school the community our school the people in school are against us Police. um if we walk mm -hmm. down the street the street is against us mm -hmm. so gay black men keep everything on the inside so i definitely know like when we're growing up you have to find strength mm -hmm. within yourself i'm because... so honored to be here today. where did you find additional support what did that really look like um, additional support came when, you know, people were able to, like, start to relate. They were like, you know what, this relationship is just like my relationship, you know, straight mm -hmm. women, straight men, um, and then, of course, the, the LGBTQIA community right. was like, oh, we got somebody on TV that looks like me and acts mm -hmm. like me, so, um, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, so I, I, I started to gather a lot of support uh, by that, but the funniest thing is that 80% of my fan base is actually now black women. Wow. Mm, so if wow. you go to my fans and my followers wow. and you break down the demographics, now those people that were throwing the Bible, you going to hell, this, this, and that, 
are now supporters. Because so. everybody want to be free.